Welcome to my living room. Welcome to Yerushalayim Yerkodesh, everybody. There's so much to talk about Hanukkah. It's hard to know where to start and it's hard to know where to end. So I'll just do my best to give a little bit of a few, a few points. First of all, where do we learn about Hanukkah? Where do, we, where do we know Hanukkah from? We actually learn the whole story of Hanukkah from the Talmud, from the Gemara, but there's no Gemara called Gemara Hanukkah. The Gemara that we learn it from is Gemara Shabbos. And in Gemara Shabbos, when we talk about the kinds of um, substances that we can use to light Shabbos candles, the kinds of wicks and the kinds of oil and the kinds of candles, that's where we also have a discussion, a very, very short, a few pages discussion about the story of Hanukkah. So you know that when we light the candles on Hanukkah, we say the bracha, Asher Kedid Baruch Atah Hashem, which means Hashem, you are the source of all blessing. You're the source of everything. That's what Baruch means. You're the source of everything. Elokeinu Melech HaOlam, our God, King of the universe, Asher Kiddushan B'Mitzvotav, that you sanctified us, you made us kadosh, you made us holy with your mitzvot, you gave us mitzvot. V'tzivanu, and you commanded us, L'hadlik Ne'er Hanukkah, to light the candles of Hanukkah. So where in the world, did it, in the Torah, did God command us to light the Hanukkah candles? The story of Hanukkah happened a thousand years after the receiving of the Torah. So why do we say, La Asher Kiddushanu, you, sanct you sanctified us, this Yivanu, when you commanded us, you Hashem commanded us. So to look at the, to find the answer for that, we're going to look at the Gemara, the Gemara in Shabbos, page uh, 21, second side of the page, and listen to what the Gemara asks the question. After discussing the candles of Hanukkah, the, the oils and the wicks, and where to put the Hanukkah menorah, it says, my Hanukkah, what is Hanukkah? That's what the Gemara says. It asks itself a question. What is Hanukkah? And the Gemara answers and it says, Tana Rabban, and we learned, the rabbis taught us. And it's the whole story that on the 25th day of Hanukkah, on the 25th day of, of Kislev, the, it's forbidden to fast and it's forbidden to make a eulogy. And we have eight for those eight days. And then it tells a little bit of the story that the, um, that the Yevanim, the Syrian Greeks defiled the base of Mikdash and they went into the base of Mikdash and they took all of the oils and they defiled them, they opened them and they used them or they just opened them. And when the Hashmonai, when the Kohanim from the fam family of Hashmonai, when they overcame the Greeks, they checked or they searched and they didn't find the Loma, hear the words. But coup, they searched, they made a bidika, they made a search. And they only found a small little container of uh, shemen, of oil, of olive oil, that had the hashkacha, that had the stamp of the Kohen Gadol. And where did they found, find it? They found it underneath the floorboards of the Beis HaMikdash. But you know the story. And, they all, and that amount of oil was enough to light the whole entire menorah, which had seven lights in the, the base of Mikdash menorah. It, it was enough oil for one day. It was a one-day supply. And, and there was an, a miracle happened with that oil. And they lit it for eight days. The Shana Acheret in the next year, Kavum, the rabbis established them, established the Asaum and made these days Yamim Tovim, Behalel the Hodaa, with praising and with thanks. Now that's the Gemara. That's that's the part of the Gemara that talks about the the whole story. And then we have different. We have all kinds of other sources that tell us the, that fill out that story. And this little Gemara, these few lines of Gemara, we could talk about for hours. So I'm just going to make, a, I just want to say a few points. First of all, where did God command us to lahad likner Hanukkah, to light, or la, some people say lahad likner shel Hanukkah. Where, where did Hashem command us? He commanded us in the book of Devarim when he says, whatever the rabbis mandate as a Sanhedrin, when the court of Jewish law rules, then that's halacha, that's Torah Misinai. 
And how does a court of, Jew, of law, how does the Jewish court of law rule? There are all kinds of ways and rules and patterns of how the Rabbanim established halacha. And this is called the development of the Torah Shabbat Peh, the development of the oral Torah. So you, you understand now that the reason that Hanukkah is so pivotal in our life is because it's the holiday, not just of the Greeks and the, uh, you know, our, our victor victory over the Greeks and the victory of our commitment to stay religious, to stay Torahic over the Greeks, not just that. It's even a little bit more fundamental than that. It's the holiday celebrating our belief and our, and our loyalty to the Torah Shabbat al to the oral Torah, to the way that our, the structure of Jewish, of Jewish life is. And that's why the non-Jewish world established their major holiday, specifically in the 25th of December, to try to knock off the commitment of the Jewish people to the 25th day of Kislev. Because our entire continuity as a nation is totally dependent on our reliance on and dependence on and loyalty to the Torah Shebertav, the written Torah, and the Torah Shebaal Peh, and the oral Torah. So really, Hanukkah is the, is the holiday of the oral Torah, of our loyalty to the oral Torah. And that's why the Gemara says, my Hanukkah, what is Hanukkah? Tana Rabbanan. Now, Tana Rabbanan literally means our rabbis taught us. But it... And then it goes on to tell what our rabbis taught us. But Chazal say also, my Hanukkah, what is Hanukkah? Tana Rabbanan. It's the, it's, the, it's the belief and the trust and the, and the loyalty to the teachings of our rabbis, the teachings of our, the, uh, of our code, Torah codifiers who never made up one law. Rather, they, they re recorded all of the laws that Moshe Rabbeinu taught including how to deal with an upcoming national miracle, which is what Hanukkah was. Okay, that's, point, that's one point. The second point, the Gemara says, Badku, they searched. The Lomatsu, and they didn't find Ella, except Pachechad, one little tiny piece of a container of oil. So there's a whole discussion, there's a safer written on the question of the, the following question. If indeed they found enough oil, this is, very, this is a very famous question. It's not my question. It's a question that we hear year after year. And the, there's 101 or 1,001 answers to this. If they found oil that was lasting for one day and they put it in the oil, they put it in the menorah, and then the oil lasted for eight days. So uh, higher mathematics tells you that what? That there was a seven-day miracle, not eight days. One day there was enough oil for one day. So how much, how, how many days extra was there a miracle that Naseb Ones, that there was a miracle did, done with the oil? Seven more days. One day there was enough and it lasted eight days. So seven days is a miracle. So why do we have a holiday for eight days? And there are a lot of answers. One is because one day celebrates the military victory. One, an extra day that we celebrate that they actually found oil at all. My favorite answer, and this is the answer I think that we need in these corona days and in this 21st century when the whole world seems to be in a crazy state, is the following. It, the Gemara, the words in the Talmud are, are measured. They are very important to analyze every single word. The Gemara says, Badku, they searched. It could have said, Matsu, they found one little jug of oil. But they added the word badku, they searched. You know, when a person is, um, is in a very, very pressured situation, high pressure, hopeless, apparently hopeless, close to despair, and yet they search for a solution and they don't give up, that's cause for a day of celebration. The fact that they actually searched they saw the devastation of the Beis Hamikdash. You know how painful that must have been for them to see? Coming into the Beis Hamikdash, they saw idols, pagan idols. They saw pigs strewn all over the place and, and, and terrible things they saw. And their hearts were broken from the humiliation to, their, to our holy temple. How does it, it you know, it's unspeakable what they, what they must have seen and how they must have felt. 
the fact that they had the determination to say, let's search for something pure. Let's search for some kind of hope. That itself was a miracle. That itself was the reason that they added an extra day of Hanukkah. So I love that because nowadays the whole world is crazy and people think like, who, you know, how is anyone going to get out of this and how are we going to have a solution and when is this going to be over and when is the lockdowns? And I just heard that California and LA, they have a lockdown even stricter than we had in Yerushalayim, the Havdal Infant of Dallas. No one's allowed to walk out of the door of their house. Like, how crazy is this? So when things are hard, Hanukkah tells us you still have to push on, still search, still hope. Hope for help, hope for salvation. Hashem will send you a miracle. Hashem will send you miracles. You just have to put one foot in front of the other and don't despair. Never despair. Ain, Rabbi Nachman says, Rabbi Nachman from Brasil says, Ain shum yush ba'olam klal. Forever is impo it's impossible. It's impossible to despair because despair doesn't really exist. Hopelessness doesn't exist. There's always hope. Which brings me to the next point I want to make. I'm not sure if I'll be able to, to we'll, we'll be learning together again before Hanukkah. So I just want to make the following, remind you of something that you know already, but it's always good every year. We have to remember, we have to learn the halachot, the laws, and remember what to do with Hanukkah when we're doing the mitzvahs of Hanukkah. So we know that the halacha says that a woman, specifically women, when the candles are lit, when the Hanukkah, for the half an hour that the Hanukkah candles are burning, and of course our, we put oil and it lasts for longer and even if you use candles, they're long, they, they last longer than uh, half an hour. But for the minimum half an hour that the candles are lit, a woman is forbidden to do any household chores. You're supposed to sit by the candles. Dafka, the women, are supposed to sit by the candles, look at them, look at the fire, look at the eye, look with your eyes at the fire, and meditate on them, meditate on the beauty of them. But more importantly than enjoying the candles is to dove and to pray by the candles. Hanukkah is a time of miracles. Pray for a miracle. You're allowed to ask Hashem to help because you know that for Hashem, nothing is a miracle. I mean, I wouldn't say pray for ele elephants to fall out of the sky. That's not the kind of miracles I'm talking about. But whatever you need, whatever you need in your life that might appear to you to be almost impossible because we know theoretically that everything is possible for Hashem. There's nothing that's impossible. <laughs> Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu, is anything impossible for me? Of course not. Still, we sometimes fall into the mindset of, of um, Teva, of nature, and we think, oh, it's so hard for this to happen, so hard for that, statistics say, whatever. No, ignore it. Hanukkah, you look at the candles and pray. Pray for, if you're lucky enough to have a family, pray for each of the members of your family. And pray for yourself, pray for your health, pray, pray for the Jewish people, pray for Eretz Israel, pray for the world. Daven Mashiach should come, don't stop davening. You'll see the, the, the half hour flies, it flies by, because there's so much to talk to Hashem about. I also want to remind you that the, can, the fire of the candles, the candles themselves has a little bit, a little bit um, of, the, of the essence of the fire of the menorah in the base, in the actual base of Mikdash, and it has a little bit of the essence of the light, the primordial light that God created the world with. The Or Haganuz, the hidden light that Hashem is saving from Mashiach, when our minds will expand and we'll see, we'll be enlightened. That a little bit of that, the essence of that is somehow hidden in the our little Hanukkah lights. And you know that the halacha says that our Hanukkah lights, now we light them by the window. I don't know how in England you light them, but uh, the Gemara says it's good to light them by the door, the front door of your house, on the left side of the door, not on the right side as you're walking in where the mezuzah is, but on the left side of the door. Mm -hmm. And it's good to light the candles at the low down, under ten tfachim, under a meter. That's the best way, according to Halacha, to, get a, to light the candles. Um, by the door, out, to show that the light should go out to light up the world, but by the door, not near the mezuzah, the other side of the mezuzah, and low down, in the dark. 
You know, that all of those things are the opposite of what we usually do. We usually do our mitzvahs in the house, not outside. We usually do our mitzvahs in the, in the light, in the daytime, not at night. We usually do the mitzvah in, on the right side, which is the side of chesed, not on the left side, which is the side of din. So Chazal tell us that Hanukkah is a time where there's, the message is there's so little despair, there's so, there's so no place for hopelessness that you're even allowed to light it in the dark and even in the outside and even low down says that the, the presence of God is not on the floor, it's, it's elevated, but we light it low down. And we light it in the dark and we light it across from the mezuzah to show that there's no hopelessness. And even those situations that look the worst, Hashem can make anything happen. Every year, Hanukkah, we're waiting for miracles. This year, we're waiting for miracles also. A lot, we not, we, there are a lot of miracles that we need to ask for Hashem. We need a lot of divine intervention this year. So don't, we have eight full days of davening. On Shabbos, I think we have two Shabbos Hanukkahs this year. I, I didn't even look. Yeah, I think we do. So yeah, so um, on Shabbos, what do you do? You light the Hanukkah, the Hanukkah, the, the Hanukkah early first, then you, then, you light Hanukkah, then you light Shabbos candles. Shabbos davening is a different thing altogether. Shabbos, you just want to cleave to God but still is permitted to mention everybody, every person or your children, if you're, if you're blessed to have children and you're blessed to have grandchildren, you're blessed to have whoever it is, pray, jump between the Shabbos candles and the Hanukkah candles, back and forth and back and forth. I want to tell you a famous Hanukkah story. And with this, I'll let you go. This story I say every single year, I heard it years and years ago, it's one of my favorite stories in, in the, and I say that about most stories, but this is really one of my favorite stories. And, it's, uh, and I heard it uh, said by, about Rabbi David Lelever. So he was lighting the Hanukkah, he was getting ready to light Hanukkah candles and he was doing it in shul. So in here, we do our Hanukkah candles at home, um, but they also light in shul. Women, we light with our families at home and the men then go to shul and they also light Hanukkah candles in shul. I don't know if you know that, but they light Hanukkah candles in shul. And in the times of the Hasidic masters, and even today, after everyone lights their Hanukkah menorah, their Hanukkah at home, and they stay at home and they, and they sit with their own personal, the lights in their own home with their family, then at a certain point, they all go to shul by the Rebbe's, by the, by the Hasidic Rebbe's, they all go to shul, to the shul of the Rebbe. And there the Rebbe has been waiting to light his, and then he lights the Hanukkah menorah for the entire congregation or he lights it with the entire congregation. And it's always very festive. It was always very festive. The Esrat Hashem will get back to that again. It'll be with community, with lots and lots of people and the shul and without masks. I hope God, please Hashem. But anyway, the, the story of this is that we come back for 200 years ago or 150 years ago and they're, they're waiting and the Rebbe, they're all, everybody comes to shul and everybody's ready for the Rebbe. And it's usually, you know, amazing experience. It's so spiritual and, uh, blessings and davening and music and camaraderie and so everybody's ready, ready, waiting and they see the Rebbe's pacing up and down and up and down and he's not lighting the menorah. It's a big giant, had a gorgeous menorah. Uh, Tolanov, sorry, Rebdov from Tolanov. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Rebdov from Tolanov. So um, he's pacing back and forth, back and forth, like as if he's nervous. So everybody get when the Rebbe's nervous, right? you know the song, when the Rebbe dances, everybody dances, when the Rebbe's nervous, everybody gets nervous. So everybody was getting nervous, like, what's the delay? What is he waiting for something? They looked around to see, is everybody here? Yeah, his family was there, his sons-in-law, were there. everybody was there. So what's he waiting? And then he looks out at the whole kihil, he looks at everybody, and all the way in the back, there's this, a very tall chassid, very tall chassid. And he says to his shamash, call him, call him to the front. Whatever his name is. I think the way I heard the story, his name was Shaila, so I'll just use that story, that name. So he calls this Shaila up to the front, and this Shaila is very, very shy, very bashful. And so he's embarrassed, like, oh no, what did I do wrong? The Rebbe's calling me in front of everybody, Ive, Ive, and he gets like was turning red in the face and afraid. And the Rebbe says to him, Shaila, tell me, you're very, I see you're very, very tall. I seem to recall that your wife is very, very short. Is that true? 
So everyone's listening to this conversation. It's not like it was private. It was in public. And everybody's listening. And they're all like a little bit laughing, like, what's going on? And Shaila, who's shy to begin with, is turning beet red now. But he says, yes, Rebbe, my wife is short. And so the Rebbe says to him, so tell me, when you want to tell your wife a secret, what do you do? So now he's now everyone's like exploding with laughter because clearly the Rebbe is playing with Shaila a little bit. And he's and Shai is embarrassed like anything. But what do you do? The Rebbe is a Rebbe. You listen to me, Rebbe. You love me, Rebbe. You listen. He says something. You have to talk to him. He says, Rebbe, I bend down to her. And so the Rebbe says, and what if? She, and what does she do anything? And he says, she stands up on her tippy toes. And with that, everybody breaks into roaring laughter. Shaila turns purple, and the Rebbe claps his hands and starts to light the menorah. And that was the end of the story. And no one knew what was going on. Everyone was like slapping Shaila on the back and he seems to have been the hero and no one knows what's going on. Later on, they asked the Rebbe's great nephew, do you know what that was all about? And he explained and he said, yes, clearly the Rebbe was davening. Everything Rebbe's do and Chassidus Rebbe's do is on a completely different level than we understand. It's not like regular like people like us. And clearly he was reminding Hashem that Hashem, we're, stipping, we're standing on our tippy toes. We're so far down, we're so low down, we're so far away from what we should be, what we could be, what we will be, but we're trying a little bit. Everybody's trying a little bit. You know, when you're standing on your tippy toes, you're trying. Sometimes we're even trying to try. You know, when little kids like want a cookie and it's on the table and they're standing up and they're trying to climb up and get that cookie. So we're trying to try Hashem, but please bend down to us already. Please bend down, lift us up and Tell us all of your secrets. Come and show us that everything that we've been doing all of these thousands of years has found favor in your eyes and that the exile is over and the Mashiach is here. You should have a happy, wonderful, lifted Hanukkah. Amen, amen.